All right, what's up guys? I'm outside in my backyard. Uh, someone asked for the third page, so let's take a look at that. Is it a function? Okay, so for functions, all we need to know is, uh, basically, <clears throat> when I'm playing a video game, I want to know if I hit a certain, if I hit a certain input, I want to know what it's gonna do. There might be more than one way to do that. In fact, that'd be sweet. Like if you, if I could move Mario left by using my controller or my keyboard, that's great. I love options. But I want to know when I hit a certain button, I know what, I, what it is it's going to do. So for 13, if I hit 0, it's going to do that. If I hit 1, it's going to do that. If I hit 2, it's going to do that. If I hit 3, it's going to do that. That's great. No issues. Okay, that's a function. For 14, if I hit 0, it, the computer is going to do option number 5. If I hit 1, the, okay, it's going to do that. 2 is going to do that. 3, it's going to do that. Okay, no, op no issues there. What they're trying to make it seem like is that these two are problems because they both do number five, but that's fine with me. Okay, so there's two ways to get Mario to do option number five. I can hit zero or two. That's great, no problem, no problem there. 15, I got a problem. If I hit zero, Mario's gonna do two. If I hit zero, Mario's gonna do option negative two. As a game player, I'm like, hey, if I hit option zero, like if I hit you know, the zero button, I want to know what he's going to do. I don't want to know. I don't want to be guessing if it's he's going to be doing negative two or positive two. So this is not a function. Okay. Um, for 17, 18, 19, and 20. Um, if I were to... Uh, we can run something what's called a vertical line test. So if I can run a straight line up and down... Um, let, let's look at the black line. Here's the black line. If I run a bunch of lines straight up and down, I never hit two black lines twice. So the black line is good. The red line, I can make straight up and down lines, and the red line, I'll never hit two points. The red line is good. It is a function. Uh, green line, if I try to um, make straight up and down lines, Oh, I hit the green line there, and I hit the green line there. So no, that fails. The green line is not a function. The blue line, uh, let's see the blue line's down here. The blue line's fine. Blue line <coughs> uh, is a function. The reason the green line is not a function, um, when I think of like, let's say I do option number three, so on for, on my remote control. Here's option one, here's option two, here's option three. I wanna know what it's gonna do, but the green line for option number three could be up here, or it could be down there. That doesn't give me a, uh, a good feeling. Um, I don't know what, if I do option number three, is it going here or is it going there? So that's why it's not, when you do an up and down line, cannot be that. I'm sorry, I'm going pretty fast. Okay, equations of lines are really easy, really easy. We, we know that y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So if I just know those two points. I can plug this in. y equals something x plus b. Now, here's the y-axis. This line intercepts the y-axis right there at positive 3. So I know that the y-intercept, the plus b, is going to be plus 3. Then I try to say, okay, how is this thing moving? This thing, the slope is going up one, up two, up two, over one, two, three, four. So the slope is up two, over four. But that, that translates into one half, right? Two forces, one half. So the equation of this line is one half x. So every time x gets bigger by one, you can tell that this thing went up a half square, a half square a half square, a half square. So, or if you, two, four. Okay, so if I go over to this one, this guy, y equals mx plus b. This one starts at three as well, so it's gonna be y equals mx plus b. But, or so, sorry, plus three. But when I look at the slope of this guy, and I say, how much does he go up and down? Like from this point to this point right here, it goes up and down zero over one. Zero one, zero divided by one is zero. So this is y, come on, y equals zero x plus three. That's, that just, zero times anything is gonna be zero, so this is just y equals three. 
we'll talk about that later more in class. But pretty much all these points, this is negative one, two, three, negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is negative seven, three. This is negative three, three. This is neg this is zero, three. That's one, three. This is five, three. So notice, it doesn't matter what the x is. This is just telling you, tell me all the points where the y is three. I don't even care what the x is. Okay, this one. Um, this one is down here at negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So y equals mx minus six. And this slope is over, let's see, down one, two, three, four, five, down five over two, down five over two. So it's negative five halves y equals negative 5 halves x minus 6. Okay, if I'm going to graph this, I'm going to go like this. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go like this. It starts at negative 1, boom, and it goes up 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. That's the, we can make 3 into a fraction easy by putting a 1 on the bottom, so up 3 over 1. There's our, there's that. Uh, if I'm going to graph this, this starts at positive two, and it goes down two over three, down two over three, down two over three, there's my line. And if y is gonna equal negative three, there's negative one, negative two, negative three, boom. I don't even care about any of what the x is, just as long as my y is negative three, it's all of those across the y equals negative three line. All right, slope. Uh, I just look for the change. If the, I say, okay, this is getting, going down by one, this is going up by one, so this is the change in y divided by the change in x. Basically, this, our y-axis went down one, and our x's went over positive one, so that slope is negative one. And if I did it here, negative one, positive one, negative one divided by one. Over here, this one goes up, the y's go up five, so if this was on a graph, our y's would have gotten one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five taller. And our x's would have gotten over two, so it would have been from there to there, up five over two. It would have went up five over two. So that's five halves is the slope. Here, five, two. Okay, and this last one might be interesting. This one went up 18, this one went over six. So that's up 18 over six, that's a slope of three. It, the bottom looks weird, right? This one went down 12, this one went down four, but negative 12 divided by negative four is still positive three. So the slope is positive three there. Um, if I have, if I, the reason why that looks weird, if I have a bunch of points that are on that, and this is up two over three, I can compare any points. If I go like this and this, uh, I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, and nine. If I compare this and this, I'm gonna get one, two, three, four, and six. If I compare this and this, I'm gonna get it two and three. Notice they're all the same ratio, two to three. It doesn't matter which points you happen to pick, and you don't have, so they just didn't happen to list the points in the right order. It doesn't matter which points you compare to which points. If you do how much it goes up by how much it goes sideways, you're still gonna get this, all the same slope. 6 divided by 9, 4 divided by 6, 2 divided by 3, you're going to get the same thing. So that was fast. Hopefully it helps.